This is an emergency broadcast transmission. This is not a test. This is an emergency broadcast transmission. This is not a test. Please remain calm. Welcome to the How to Survive the Narcissist Apocalypse podcast. I'm Chad the Impaler, and thank you for showing up this episode. And on this episode, we have a narcissist abuse survivor interview with Allie. And this is an experimental podcast episode. I will explain that after this little bit right here. Uh, Narcissism is a character trait that exists on a spectrum. A small amount of narcissism is healthy, and a person with an unhealthy level of narcissism may be called a narcissist. For the purposes of this podcast, uh, a person who exhibits narcissistic traits and or consistent pattern of maladaptive narcissistic behaviors, regardless of whether they meet the diagnostic uh, criterion or have a formal diagnosis, may be referred to as a narcissist on this podcast. Even if it is more likely that they have a cluster B personality disorder, such as borderline, histrionic, or antisocial personality disorder, as long as they exhibit narcissistic traits. And now, with that out of the way, let me just say that I have recorded this introduction around eight times. Uh, I've been working... It, this episode, later on, we discuss slowing down and... I recorded this so many times to try and slow down each each time. And it seems that I'm not very good at it. It's one of my biggest problems. So I've been working on slowing down how I am talking and thinking more uh, throughout this whole entire process. And now I'm getting into my head. But besides that, let me just let me just get to a little rundown of what we're going to be doing with Allie. So when I said we were doing an experimental podcast, that means this one is, if this was a song, this would be the Frank Zappa song of uh, podcasts. And we do some art therapy halfway through her interview. We kind of, we stop at a place we feel comfortable stopping and we go into uh, some drawing and we get to like a deeper level of uh, our vulnerabilities and our anxieties, uh, which is pretty interesting. At first, I was going to stop the recorder, but I kept the recorder going. And I was happy that uh, I did that because more came out and more more and more came out. I found it pretty interesting. Uh, Yes, there are spaces in between of maybe five seconds to possibly 10 seconds where nothing uh, is said because we're in the middle and we're in the moment and being present while actually drawing. Uh, But with with this whole entire process, it was, it was really interesting. We also discuss uh, Allie's narcissistic parents, uh, her parentification, uh, and the her ability to uh, I, not her ability. She has a, a lack of trust, and her ability now is to um, or disability is to try and uh, figure that out. Uh, as well, on this episode, uh, we discuss her. What's the best way to put it? Her, not her lack of identity, but in a way it is her lack of identity or not knowing who she is or, or, or things she even likes or what she's good at and a lot of confidence kind of stuff. Um, and I guess that's it. Well, no, there's not, there's a, one a little bit more. And, and that is, uh, there's, a, there's some false starts on here or false endings on this episode, which is kind of funny. There's at one point, this podcast actually ends. Our conversation ends, our drawing ends. But uh, the next uh, week, I was on the phone with my sister, and I was talking about this specific episode. And uh, she noticed something in, in Allie's drawing. Uh, and I'm like, oh, my God, how, I can't believe I didn't see that. My sister saw it. Thank goodness for my sister. I called Allie, and I said, this is what my sister found about your drawing, and you'll find out later what that was. Uh, do you want to continue the drawing process? and go back and record more. And she said, yes. So then we shifted and then it lasted another 20 minutes. So there's this kind of end and then there's an other end um, throughout it. So there's this, a lot of stuff kind of going on. It's to me, it was a really interesting episode. It was a fun episode to do. And uh, now I'm just going to, uh, you know, get out of my own way. And also uh, after the fact, after this episode is done, we will put the, 
uh, drawings on our Instagram page, which is our Instagram tag is, uh, or not our tag, it's uh, Instagram slash Narcissistinction. Uh, and our drawings will be up. So once you uh, hear this episode, you can then see what we actually drew. And that is that. So without further ado, here is my interview with Allie. Thank you for everyone who is listening today. With me, I have Allie. How are you, Allie? I'm good, Chad. How are you? I am good. I have uh, my parents' dog with me, and hopefully uh, he will not bark. But if he does, you know, uh, <laughs> hopefully it will be a funny moment of the podcast. Uh, oh, you, yeah. are, you are a narcissist abuse survivor, and mm-hmm. uh, you are, I, I think, currently no contact, and I guess we will mm-hmm. get there. Um, so for everyone out there, uh, listening, this is, uh, interesting story and, you know, uh, one of, uh, where you moved around a lot. So, uh, hard, mm-hmm. it was hard to get ro- uh, roots, uh, with other individuals while growing up. And now I've talked too much and I'm just going to give the floor over to you. Um, and it's yours. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Um, no, but honestly, actually, if you have, if there's anything like a comment or a question you have, like, feel free to interrupt because I'm probably actually just going to go on a tangent that won't go anywhere. So, but, um, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Um, but thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I think I found your page when I was on, like, on, you know, I have my IG account and I was exploring and I, saw your account and I don't ever find, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of narcissistic abuse accounts or accounts that focus on it or talk about it specifically. So when I found it, I really latched on, got really excited to talk about it. And now I'm nervous. Um, but uh, well, I, it's a, d- don't be nervous. Well, you can't, you, know, you can be nervous. <laughs> Just remember like at, for actually something they didn't say before for everyone. At, this is going to be an interesting one because at one point we're going to be doing some sort of art therapy while we're talking Ooh. and we'll be drawing. And eventually we'll put that out on the Instagram uh, what we came up with, but, uh, now I interrupted, go back to what you said. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, yeah, no, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I think this is a really cool platform for people to share their stories. And I've heard a few, and I think it's really cool that people have been brave, um, and sharing what they've gone through and, and, um, maybe helping people realize what they're going through. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm Allie. I am in my late twenties. And like you said, I'm, uh, no contact with both of my parents. Um, but it's my dad who's a narcissist. Um, he's, you know, not diagnosed, which I don't know any narcissists who have formally been diagnosed. Um, but I'm pretty sure he's a malignant narcissist. Um, my mom is, I don't, is nothing, but she, uh, you know, I think was his primary victim. Um, so that kind of affected the way uh, I was parented and I have an older brother too. So I guess both of us. Um, so I also grew up in, uh, a few countries, uh, cause of my dad's job. Um, we moved around every few years. Um, so I'm, a, I'm American, but I was born um, in Singapore and, uh, grew up in Indonesia, uh, Mexico, uh, Virginia for one year and then Japan before I, uh, actually came back to the DMV area. So, um, sort of all over the place. Um, I think, uh, what, (laughs) what makes me kind of, it feels so narcissistic myself talking about myself like this, honestly. Um, but, uh, I guess because of like the moving around and you, you know, how narcissistic parents can be, I sort of have no idea who I am. Um, and I've been struggling with this lack of identity, but, um, let me see. I'll start from the beginning. Um, actually, Chad, can we pause for a second? So we're back from our little pause and, uh, we discussed some things and, uh, are are we, I think we're ready to go. We're ready to go. All right. All right. Um, Let's hear it. I (laughs) Okay. So, um, yeah, so like I said, um, I didn't really, it was really my mom who was the target of, of, I guess, or she was my dad's narcissistic supply and my brother and I didn't really see, um, what, that something was terribly wrong or really we didn't see my dad at all. Um, so, uh, he was the breadwinner, I guess, and he was very interested in money. Um, he was very material is very materialistic and, um, uh, 
I think he never really wanted kids. So I, from basically from what I've gathered, because I don't really know much about my dad, I, I'm pretty sure he spent like the first six years of my life golfing or working and probably cheating on various women. Um, so, uh, but like, uh, to me, I, I would just, I would be at home just chilling in my, like in my head, playing with my toys and just not really interacting with, I think either him or my mom. I think my mom was also sort of trying to distract herself also. Um, um, but uh, actually, I do have one memory of him where I wanted to draw, um, and uh, I asked my mom for some paper, and she's like, oh, you know, why don't you go ask your dad? And I, I think maybe it was an attempt to, like, get me to interact with him. Like, even though I didn't really know, I, I don't know, like, I just didn't really feel anything about my dad, and I think I knew he was my dad, but, like, I was just like, I don't really want to talk to you if I don't have to. Um so I go into his room slash office and I have a very vivid memory of, um, like looking up at him, like it's like a three-year-old, um, and he's like at his desk and his closet is open and that's where he keeps all of his paper. And it was, you know, colorful and, you know, like nice construction paper. So I'm like, um, dad may I have some paper. And he just says, no, like he, I think he just said no. Um, and I didn't really know how to respond. So I just walk away. And then I think I shortly after that, I ended up drawing on the walls because I just wanted to draw. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then my mom saw and got really angry with me and I don't know if she like put it together. Um, but she like kind of made me feel super guilty cause she like pulled out her bucket and like a toothbrush and like immediately started washing off like the drawing in front of my very eyes. And I just felt really bad because I knew I did a bad thing, but like, I didn't know how to convey, like, I don't know. I mean, well, I don't know when you're a kid, you don't really know, like, I don't know, your dad could have just given you some paper, but instead I think, I think that's where all that internalized, like I can't do anything right started, or that's just a good example of it. Like, uh, well, I wasn't supposed to get any paper, but I'm not supposed to draw on the walls either. So I guess I was the worst. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's see, fast forwarding a bit. Um, I think I, like the next phase of like my feelings about my end dad, like it must have been actually when I moved back to the U S. Um, so at this point I had lived in like, um, in, uh, Indonesia, Mexico, and Japan. Japan's awesome, by the way. And, but I'm, my view's a bit colored because I, I think I grew up there when I was in, like, my very formative years. Um, but when I moved back here, I was sort of a preteen, and that's sort of when you start hating your parents. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, and this is also when my mom started to um, talk to me a lot about what her issues were with my dad. Like we had that sense that like something was wrong. Um, and without being able to put our fingers on it, but then my mom just went out and was like, you know, our marriage isn't, um, normal. And when you grow up, don't find a man like this. <laughs> um, but she, she didn't say it exactly like that, but she would tell me story. She told me that, um, he cheated on her and, um, and, uh, probably continued to cheat on her and, uh, just doesn't treat people right. Um, but she would also say things like, you know, don't like try not to hate your father. I just want you to know this because it's important for you to realize this isn't normal. And yet, I don't know, as now that I'm older, like, I, I don't know. I don't think it was, Oh, were you going to say something? Oh yeah. That's a giant mixed message right there. Oh yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I would have ultimately hated him anyway. Um, but like, I don't know if I were in her position, but it's, it's so hard, right? Like you don't want your daughter to, 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 <laughs> to marry a narcissist. And you know, uh, that tends to happen when you have a narcissistic parent. but there was a lot of ine- enmeshment on her end. So I have, a, um, I have an interesting, well, not an interesting, I have a strange question. I don't even know what's strange. Yeah. I don't even know why I said that, but uh, my question is, when your mom's uh, told you these things, 
Um, obviously, she you're now kind of a parent to your mom in in a way because she's confi- oh, yeah. she's confiding in you. Uh, yeah. At this point, uh, if you ever to put up like a stink or want to do things your way, uh, did this kind of like uh, take whatever rebel rebellion you might have had or some sort and you kind of quieted it down because now your mom has told you that she has these problems. So because of that, you didn't want to rock the boat even more of any sort or am I on an other? Uh, on no, a- I think I think you're absolutely right. I think I think. I, yeah, I, I think that had a lot to do with it. I think there were other things too, like, you know, so my mom is Indonesian and, or that's, it's an Asian country. And in, in, in countries like that, you're um, supposed to respect your parents and they have an interesting definition of respect. Um, basically, that means you can't like argue or discuss things with your parents because it's talking back. So you know, I think she felt a lot of lack of control in her marriage, but then also I felt that because I knew she was already dealing with like such a horrible person on her own. Um, and, but then also I knew like, I just can't talk back to my mom. That's wrong. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'll, there were a lot of things, but ultimately leading to me, uh, not wanting to, I mean, like I did rebel. I wasn't a good kid. But, um, but in the beginning I was, it was, it was pretty tormenting, like not really knowing what to do with all of this. Like I have to parent my mom and there's so many things I can't do. And for a while I was okay with it, but then I just kind of, you know, you can only deal with that for so long or I could anyway. I think, I think I, I'm amazed at the people who are able to like, I don't know, absorb it, I think. And I mean, I, I guess it's hard for me to believe that it's just that, that, that this kind of energy just dissipates. Like I think people are carrying a lot deep inside and it like leaks out and, you know, and, and manifests itself in really bad behavior and, and all that. But like for me, I just kind of exploded a few years later. Um, but yeah, on that note, like uh, there was a lot of um, parentifying, parentification of my mom. Um, like, um, avoiding my dad, getting really angry with him, not really for any good reason. Cause again, I was a teenager, but I, he gave me plenty of reasons later. Like he would do things like, um, you know, he bought me a diary, um, which is, you know, it was really, and it was actually quite nice. It was like, I don't know if it was like real leather, but it was like a nice small leather bound journal. And I, I, you know, I didn't realize that when a, when a narcissist gives you a gift, what the implications of that were. So I took it, I wrote in it. And then after over the next few weeks, I noticed he would have really pointed things to say, um, as if he was reading out of my diary, which he was. Oh my. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty awful. Um, he, he, and he, throughout our lives, he actually had a habit of like taking things out of like people's purses and like, going through your shit and like, it's just not surprising at all, but like he literally used it to like get information on me. Um, which is really shitty. Um, it, cause there was one moment where like, I think I was sitting on like a recliner writing in my journal and he said, he just says something really passive aggressive. And I, I'm upset. I start writing stuff in my journal. I don't know if I'm writing about him or if I'm just, you know, I was already writing in it and I was just ignoring him and keep like just, keeping going. And he's like, Oh, okay. Keep writing horrible things about me then. And I'm like, um, yeah. So, so, so he went from an absent father to yeah. a, oh, a control, like a, a passive aggressive controlling father. Definitely. He, uh, he was, yeah, extremely controlling. Um, and then, um, I think when I started to realize that like, this was just, total bullshit, you know, like I would, um, it's hard to think of like the unreasonable things he did now. Like, let me think. How's your brother, uh, when is he going to the exact same thing? Is any of you a golden child or a scapegoat? That's a good question. I've tried to think about that. I think it's hard to, it's been hard to like put labels on it because I think that the roles change so much. Okay. Like, yeah, like I think, 
uh, I think my brother, I, I, to me, he seemed like the golden child, but I think if I talked to him, he would say like, no, dad was a dick to me too, just in different ways. <laughs> um, but, but you still speak to him. Um, say that again. You still speak to your brother. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, we're, we're okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, my brother and I got cl- um, close and like when he, when we were both in high school, cause we both realized what total shit bags our parents were. Um, and we, we, that, that's when we like started talking to each other and realized like, Oh yeah, this is awful. Um, related. My dad used to think, um, or even said to us or like within earshot of us that he thought my brother and I, when we like went out together, like just to go on walks and shoot the shit, um, and like get out of the house. Cause we hated it there. He thought we were going out and smoking weed and we're just like, what? <laughs> like, no, like, okay. I wasn't that kid, but like, I wasn't doing that. Like sometimes we go grocery shopping for our parents or sometimes we just had to go for a walk and he's just like, Oh yeah, the kids are just, you know, we, you know what they're doing. They're smoking weed. And it's like, well, where are you getting your information, dude? So he made a lot of stuff up too. Like when he didn't know anything, um, after a while, like after the diary incident and, you know, like he would eavesdrop on my phone calls too. And like, then bring up what I said later. Um, I don't know. I I guess he said that just to make us feel like we weren't, we didn't have any privacy. I guess that was a whole theme in our family too. Like (laughs) everyone is up in your business. Um, so I, I definitely tried to like keep my life to myself and like, um, you know, as I got older and he was my Facebook friend or whatever, I blocked him to make sure that he couldn't see what was on my news feed. Cause it was the same thing. Like he would, anyway, um, what were they saying? Oh, no, I understand. Like, I don't, uh, I barely, if it wasn't for, uh, this podcast and, uh, the, uh, book that I've been uh, writing, I wouldn't really have a social media presence at all because I just don't want anyone <laughs> knowing my my business. Um, yeah. Because you kind of, like I just don't want that used. You don't want that used against you. Yeah. Um, exactly. And in, in in my for me personally, and it's not the same for everyone, but for me personally, the less uh, others know, in my, in my opinion, like just the better for for me the less that can be nitpicked or Mm -hmm. uh things like that uh so i understand yeah no exactly like it's weaponized like and anything you say can be used against you like and he and then and then so and then somehow they manage to take whatever you said and like make it worse somehow like or just completely twisting your words right so um yeah i definitely learned to like just keep as much as I could from him, lest it be, you know, it just, it's turned against me. Um, so anyway, he went from just not being there to being an asshole and not me not understanding why. And I think me not knowing why, like, I think this happens to a lot of kids. Like, I mean, it leads to a lot of like emotional issues and just like a lack of development emotionally. Like I had a lot of like, bottled up feelings and I didn't really know like what was going on and like, you know, like mixed up with all the teenage angst and hormones, it doesn't really help. Um, but like, yeah, as I got older, the abuse really ramped up or like at least maybe, or perhaps I just became more aware of it. Um, like as my mom was telling me things and as I got older and I guess got more responsibilities, you know, she told me more, but I also, you know, um, at some point, like kids get credit cards, but I got a prepaid card. Um, and I had this prepaid card until I was like 22 because my dad just didn't want to give me a credit card because he didn't trust me with money. Um, he was super stingy. Um, I mean, not even that he was financially abusive. Like we always thought we were poor, but we like, we weren't rich or anything, but we, he really made us feel like we're going on nothing. Like, and, but he was really just keeping it to himself and buying new golf clubs and polo shirts and stuff. Um, and really just to make us feel like bad about asking him for anything like paper or, um, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, so for your mom, she saw him uh, spending nicely on himself, but she's kind of, was she, is she, was she working? 
No, she was she was a housewife. So um, yeah, she worked before. Yeah. So she's at home, not you know he's taking care of himself, but no one's really taking care of her. Um, mm-hmm. And so she's stuck in that kind of cycle. Oh, where, uh, what were your grandparents like? Did you know them? Ooh, um, that's a big question. Um, my mom's parents. Um, well, her mother died. I, I didn't really know my parents or grandparents. Okay. Um, my mom's parents were nice. As far as I know, my dad's parents were a piece of work. Um, actually, I have another little story where um, when I was little, like, I, I mean, I don't remember this. I was also told the story secondhand. We were all at my grandmom's house. And my, my dad's talking to her. My mom walks into the room and he's talking about how my brother and I are going to turn out to be brats because of the way my mom is raising us. Um, so they didn't think very highly about, um, I don't know how she was raising us. I think, I mean, she, I, you know, with all of her problems and imagine everything she's going through, she was in a, she was a very loving mom. Like she was a super loving parent. Like she, she did the best she could. Um, and, and he didn't do anything and he'll just say that we were going to grow up to be brats. And she would tell me that, like, after I heard him say that, like, I was going to prove him wrong. Like I was going to raise two great kids. And I think considering everything, we turned out pretty good. You know, I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I'm, you know, I, I didn't have, I don't, I don't even want to say like the bad things I could have done because like, I know other people have like. Are, are in it right now and that I don't want to judge anything as bad but like I'm still alive I have a job I'm, I'm happy um and I'm not a dick so I think that's um I think that shows I she did a pretty good job um but uh, so yeah long story short my grandparents are assholes mm-hmm. I think he my dad was the way he was because of them um not that I really know because I didn't know I don't know much about my dad like he didn't really tell us about his how he grew up or even what he did for a living. Like I sort of had to piece that together too. Like I knew, I know we obviously know we moved around a lot and then he worked as a foreign service officer for the U S government, but I don't know what the fuck that means. Sorry. Can I cuss? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> like, I don't know what he did. Like if you ask me what he did on a daily basis, I think when I was younger, I'd tell you like, Oh, he, he issues passports, but I don't think he did that. Like, I think he helped open up a Costco in Japan. Um, but I don't know why. Um, I don't understand at all how his job works. It's just, it's just weird how little I knew about him. Um, and I actually have a story about that later where I do learn a lot about him in a very unconventional way, but we'll get to that. Um, anyway, um, let's see. Let me think of some like actual examples of what he did. Cause I'm talking a lot about how he's such an asshole, but not really like, I'm kind of, I don't know. I imagine your listeners like are also like. I know we, have we, we don't need examples. Or, the, the, we don't need examples. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, sometimes there's like definitive stories that are uh, can explain everything, and then sometimes it's just like a life, like a lifelong of like yours was more of like an escalation. Uh, yeah. As time went on, did it, it did more occur the more time he had or free time he had. Yeah, he he actually so he's a little bit older than my mom and like older for someone for for having a kid my age. So he retired actually when I was um I think 13. So he had a ton of free time and now that I think about it that's when things started getting worse because he spent a lot of time at home. Um or you know, he would spend a lot of time golfing and going on trips and then other than that he was home. Who would he go on um, those trips with? His friends? I don't know. Oh, no That's one a knows. Good question. No one knows. No one knows. Um, I don't think he had a lot of friends. Um, I made a joke about that once, and he got really angry because I was like, "You don't have any friends." And I was like, "Oh shit, I shouldn't have said that." Um, I suspect he had some girlfriends. Um, he might have gone on trips with his brothers, um, uh, but maybe he just went by himself. Um, he, I, I just know he liked to golf. Um, so you probably just like went out where you could, I don't know where you golf, California. Um, anywhere. I, <laughs> um, but yeah, he just, he lived his life. 
So, like, so, it makes so, you wonder why he had kids, so, honestly. So he didn't really bring you on these trips. But at the same time, you're probably like, thank yeah. goodness I didn't go on these trips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I, I didn't give a single shit about being with him anywhere. And I think sometimes he would. Like, I think for some reason we went to North Carolina all together as a family, and I hated that. And I was just like, why? Like, no one likes each other. I don't know what we're doing here can't we just be home like on the internet? Cause no one cares what we do anyway. But yeah, I remember that was a golfing trip too. Um, yeah, North Carolina, big golfing place. Yeah. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> it is. Um, okay. Um, so uh, eventually, uh, eventually your mom, yeah. uh, gets divorced from him. Oh yes. That, um, and, and that happened. So, and, and you were probably a big part of this whole entire uh, situ- like it's all of a sudden it's probably landed on you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, fast forwarding like to that, I, at that point, um, after just tolerating his abuse for many more years, I just, um, after I graduated college, I was just like, I'm not gonna, I think after I visited my family on Christmas, I was like, I'm not doing this again. Like it, it was just, I don't know. I was so angry at that point. And I'm just like, I don't know why I'm dealing with this anymore. Um, that's when I decided not to talk to him anymore. Um, but then I, I had this niggling thought that my, you know, my mom is still up there. Um, at this point, my brother is, you know, living on the other side of the country and not really interested in our family either. Um, but I still live close to my parents, um, you know, like 30 miles away. And so close enough to feel like obligated to do something. Um, and, uh, I just, I would call my mom like from time to time and be like, how are you doing? Are, you know, is everything okay? And, you know, she'd really try to put on like a strong face, but like you, I think things are really bad between a person and a narcissist when it's just them, like, and there aren't any witnesses. So I'll never really know like what happens, but I can guess. And it, it's not very good. Um, like, so talking about myself and like how, how it was with my dad, like you have to remember like how horrible things are probably for my mom behind the scenes too. Like I'll never really know. Like she she told me a lot, but maybe she didn't tell me everything. Um, so I think a little more than a year ago or maybe almost two years ago at this point, I finally convinced my mom that she needed to get out. Like I, had been talking with my brother and trying to strategize, like, you know, mom can't live with dad anymore. Like, this is like, we're out of the house. There's literally no reason for them to be together. Like we need to get her out of there before she dies or something horrible happens. I mean, that would be the horrible thing to happen, but you know, Mm -hmm. um, and I know like, this is so it's, it's, I don't know, like a kid shouldn't be talking about how to help their parent get a divorce. Um, but my mom is an immigrant and um, had been disempowered for, you know, over two decades by this horrible, horrible man that made her feel like she couldn't do anything without him. So, of course, she didn't know how to get a divorce. Um, and so uh, I finally helped her find a lawyer or attorney. I don't know what the difference is. And uh, we hired a private investigator to see if we could catch him cheating. Um, uh, did all that cool stuff. Eventually we just, um, Oh, uh, we eventually, we, uh, snuck her out of the house under the guise of her coming to visit me for a couple weeks, but she never went back home. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a whole thing. Um, that was actually, that's probably one of the more stressful parts of my life. Actually. Like I had a lot of nightmares. Um, at that like point, even though I had, Sorry, at that point, mm-hmm. did you uh, feel that you were responsible for your mom at this point now that you've set all of this kind of into motion? Yes, absolutely. I was like, okay, we're going to have to find mom a place to live. She can stay with us for a while. And I was, um, I was, I was living with my then boyfriend at the time. It was like, she's going to stay with us until we find her a place. We have to get all of our things out. We need to make sure this divorce goes smoothly and that she gets what she deserves all of that. So I was managing that while I also had a full-time job. Um, so it was a lot. Um, and 
Um, Were you close to any sort of breakdown on your on your end, physically? Uh, whew. yeah, I think so. I'm trying to. It wasn't like when you think about it, it wasn't that long ago, but it feels like eons ago. I would, um, yeah, I I would have like stomach issues. Like I like wouldn't. I would like lose my appetite, feel really nauseous, and like just not eat for a few days. Um, really bad headaches. Um, just emotionally, like, I don't know. I ha- I feel like at, by the end of the day, I was like completely drained. Like, I don't know. I was, I'm surprised at how much, how well I was juggling it. Like during the day, like making calls and trying to live my life. And, but like, again, the nightmares, like I go to bed and like, just have these horrible dreams of like yelling or trying to scream at my dad and like nothing would come out. And then I'd be waking, I'd wake up and I, I'd be screaming and my boyfriend would be like, Allie, are you okay? Are you dying? What's wrong? Like, uh, so I don't know if you can classify them as like night terrors or something, but those are horrific. I am, and, I am, um, I am not a dream specialist, but sometimes I'll look up my dreams. Uh, uh-huh. and I think that I, off the top of my head, I, I'm not even gonna look it up. I think that one is more of a helplessness uh, mm. type of de- Like uh, you're trying to, uh, do something or notify somebody or yell at someone and nothing is coming out of your mouth. Like yeah. that's kind of like you're trying, but nothing is happening. And that's like, you're, you're mm-hmm. just in a state of helplessness. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, just I like, and that kind of encapsulates how I felt growing up, like just not having a voice, like, and not, and then as I got older and then finally realized like, Oh, my dad's a narcissist. Oh, I have social anxiety. Oh, I have no boundaries. Like all of that, like realization after realization, it empowered me. Like first I'm like devastated. I'm like, I have no boundaries. I'm I'm like just a shell of a woman. But then I don't know, with all this information, you can kind of build yourself up to. Um, so it's weird that I started having these dreams. Like, I don't know. I feel like well after I kind of sorted myself out from like, this mess of a childhood. Um, but, um, but, but yeah. with, with, with your mom, uh, she got divorced and, yeah. and now you don't speak to her. So what happened there? Yeah. So, um, I, <sighs> did she start showing codependent traits or, uh, I think, I think you could say she was codependent since I was, a kid, Mm -hmm. like the things that she told me, she didn't really tell my brother, you know? Um, like she, you know, she was trying to help me and guide me, but at the same time, I think she was using me as a crutch. Um, and as I got older, I think in, in helping her through this, this divorce, I think she knew it and that kind of agonized her. But like, I, I don't regret helping her, but there were, she treated me in a way that I don't think is acceptable for anyone to treat another adult, which is, I don't know, even if you're, um, someone who has been at the, at the hands of a narcissist, like when you're an adult, you can't, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you have fleas and you know, and you know that you've been in a relationship with a narcissist and you, you, you don't become one yourself. You try not to like, that's, that's what sets us, sets us apart from the narcissist. But, um, I think, I think she couldn't move past everything she went through. And I mean, and who am I to say she should like, that's 20 years married to someone like that. But I was asking her to get help. I was asking her to, you know, seek therapy and talk to other people about this, but she would be talking to me about it. And, I'm like trying to work on myself and get myself out of this. And I'm like, I, I think it's another issue of boundaries. It's like, I, I can't talk to you, my mom about all of this stuff anymore. Like it's just, it was too much. It was just, it was a huge emotional burden. And I felt like such, I still feel like an asshole for being like, I don't want to talk to my mom about these issues anymore, but it was really hard. Um, and then, and then I guess the reason I don't talk to her anymore, she has never approved of a boyfriend, which, you know, was fine when my boyfriends were assholes, which, yeah, I, yeah, um, they really were in the beginning, but, um, 
uh, he's my husband now. Um, and he's a really good guy. Um, but she got really upset. Like, and she sort of, um, when I, when I married my husband, I eloped, um, she got really upset, which is so weird because she was the one who wanted us to be together. Like he was in my life just as a friend and she was like, Oh, wouldn't it be nice if they got together? And then we did. And then all of a sudden things weren't okay. So it just like, I didn't know how to like make her happy. And then that was just another, like, it's weird. A lot of the, a lot of the ways I responded to her behavior are like how someone would respond to a narcissist behavior. Like a lot of the like eggshell walking and people pleasing. Like I did a lot of that with her, even though she, I really wouldn't call her a narcissist. So like we, we basically had a big falling out a few months ago. Um, and it was just like, I, I really can't like do this anymore until you figure your stuff out and like treat me like an actual adult woman and not just your like six-year-old daughter um six-year-old and, daughter and mother yeah weirdly yeah, yeah. Did, did she uh, did, uh does she have a lot of friends or any friends not in the united states okay. not really so, um, so she yeah. so she just needs to learn how to do things for herself and be by herself and create a new life for herself and she's using you as a, a crutch to do. Were you feeling yeah. guilt if you like? If did she ask you to do a lot of things with her or do things for her? She, um, I think she wanted to, but like wouldn't because she knew how that would sound. Like, oh, I don't want to be that mom who's always like asking her daughter to do things with her. But that's what she wanted. So then she would kind of like it would be very passive aggressive. Like she would expect me to to go over to her house and expect me to do things with her without her asking, which is kind of worse if you think about it. Um, it's like holding these expectations over someone um, and and getting mad when they don't fulfill them. Um, a lot of it could be cultural, honestly, but mm-hmm. a lot of I think a lot of it has to do with how like. Oh. Whoa! So, sorry, that, <laughs> everyone. That, if you can hear that, hold on one second. Let me just do this. Harry, calm down. Hearing the cat too. <laughs> uh, I, I, that's the first time he's barked since he's been here. So, oh. so everyone who's listening to this, the, there's there's a, a dog here named Harry. He's a cute little guy. Hi, Harry. And he's uh, barking. Uh, so when it comes to your mom, uh, I guess it, I, it, you don't believe she's a narcissist, uh, but she probably has a lot of codependency issues, and she would probably benefit from going to like a codependence anonymous group. Uh, if, uh-huh. she, if she was willing to even do that at all. Yeah, but she's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, I think she sees therapy like as, as, uh, as, uh, failing. Like it's for crazy. I think she said word for word, it's for crazy people. Um, oh, that's too bad. Which, yeah, but I, and, and so I spent a lot of time trying to be like, mom, I'm in therapy. Like, am I crazy? Like, um, it's, it's really helping me. And I think I got her on the phone with a therapist once for a consultation and that's the furthest I was able to get. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's just a really weird hurdle for her. She developed like a weird defense mechanism. Like she's very spiritual, not religious. She hates religion, but, um, she, she, I don't even know how to describe it. She, she's sort of developed a weird, like, um, pseudoscience spiritual religion of her own that she thinks like has helped her a lot. Um, which is she, a Jedi? Sounds, is she a Jedi? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. She probably wouldn't accept a label. Oh, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't, I honestly, it just, I think it's just, that just goes to show how fucked this whole thing was for her. Like that she, she just, I think, what is it? It's like, there's, there's fighting, fleeing or fly, uh, fight, flight and freezing or something. Mm -hmm. And I think she's like completely frozen and just like numb from everything. Um, at least when I last spoke to her, it's been a few months now. Um, and she really just needs to, I mean, I think she probably would benefit a lot from, you know, being with her friends and, and maybe getting a job, but like just to feel like she, 
not because like she needs to make money or anything, but because she used to have a job before she married my dad. And like, she, I think she felt like very in control, like and independent. And then she's been dependent for so long that I, I think if she realized that like, she still has a lot of power on her own, like she wouldn't be feeling this way, but I'm just, I can't tell her these things. I can't make her feel a certain way. She has to get there on her own. Mm-hmm. Um, it really does sound like I'm talking about my kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Um, uh, so, so, um, so right now in your life, uh, what were a lot of the, your, in your, your perceived deficiencies and how uh, are you working on quieting uh, your inner critic uh, mm. and going kind of forward and, and coping uh, and healing from kind of all of this? And then we'll eventually we'll get into our art project. Yeah. Um, so I really, so I've been no contact with my dad for a few years. And since then, I have really tried to be like doing, and especially after the divorce, just trying to, their divorce, trying to think about like, what can I do for me um, that, you know, makes me happy, which is such a weird, I don't know, like I, you know, when you, when you meet someone and they're like, so what do you like, what are your hobbies? I'm like, I hobbies, like, I like to sleep a lot. I, uh, I like animals, but then that's sort of where it ends. I don't, I didn't even have a pet at the time. Um, so I really, I tried to make it a goal to like slowly try to, I guess one way you can put it is be a more interesting person, but really it's just about like just doing things for myself and not really trying not to care what other people thought. Um, and one, I thought a good way to start would be like thinking about what I liked to do when I was really young. Um, cause after, I think when I was like, when I was a teenager, I sort of just stopped doing things because I didn't see the point. Like I thought, you know, if you're not good at something, why do it? So I didn't do a lot. Um, but when I was little, like I said, I like to draw when I could, um, I would do a lot on the computer actually. Like if I didn't, since I didn't have paper, I would go on paint and just like, you know, draw like the galaxy or like a salt shaker. Cause I like blues clues, just weird things like that. Um, what was the guy's name from blues clues again? Steve. Steve. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I loved him. So sad when they swapped, swapped him out for Joe. It was not cool. Um, <laughs> I, I watched that show to an embarrassingly old age. I think I was, I went in fourth grade when I finally stopped watching. That. Like it was so comforting. Um, Do you know what's anyway. embarrassing? I'm 43, and I know what Blue's Clues and Steve is, so no, don't, so, so don't feel embarrassed. <laughs> but you have me. Ne- I don't know. It's fine. You have I have nieces. nieces yes. <laughs> no, that's fine. I think. Um, no, I. Uh, so yeah, just um, what else did I did I like? I really like reptiles. Like I like crocodiles and snakes and all those like the scary things that girls don't usually like. Um, Um, so I'm trying to, you know, read more about animals again and go to the zoo. Um, I adopted a cat because my parents didn't want a cat. Um, she's here now. I wonder if she'll say something. No, no, she's just licking herself, but she's super sweet. I really love having her around and she makes me feel better. Um, do you want to know? I I have an embarrassing story for you. Oh, sure. The, 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 (laughs) The whole blues clues reminded me. I've done some embarrassing things. Uh, and it had to do with my <laughs> nieces and I'm just going to try and make you laugh. So my nieces, uh, obviously when they're much older now, uh, but when mm-hmm. they were younger, they love like, uh, Hillary Duff and, uh, the Jonas Brothers Ooh, yeah. and, you know, Justin Bieber, the young Justin Bieber. Um, but they were a big fan. Uh, two of my nieces were a big fan of the Jonas Brothers. So I knew that if you became part of the fan club, you could get like really good tickets before they went on sale to everyone else. So, I joined <laughs> the Jonas Brothers fan club so oh. I could so I could get my nieces like early tickets. What I didn't expect one day was when I came home uh from work uh on my doorstep and my doorstep was pretty close to the curb. So every one of my neighbors could see was a giant box that said Jonas I was new to the neighborhood too that said Jonas Brothers fan club on it. <laughs> And I was like, everyone must think I am a pedophile on this street. Oh, no. um, It's not something. So I immediately scooped it up and went inside. 
Uh, but yeah, that's my embarrassing, you know, not just blues clues. I know about uh, I'll, too much about a lot of stuff. I shouldn't know about. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, men men can't have interest in things like that, yeah. I guess. It doesn't look good. It wasn't an interest. I was just trying to get, you know, good tickets for my nieces. It, yeah, that well, part worked. No, that you, part worked. Yeah, no. It really was coming from a good place. It's, you know. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry, though. That sucks. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, I interrupted, and we were talking about your uh, insecurities and, and things along those lines. And one of them was, I guess, drawing. Or, or actually, we were talking about this before. Not just drawing. It was more of you weren't, uh, you didn't know what you were good at because no one showed any interest or gave you encouragement in anything growing up. And no, I didn't. I, for a lot of people out there, you know, uh, sometimes when you're growing up with a narcissistic parent, sometimes you think that, like, uh, who, who might, you think that, oh, they're, they were nitpicking or whatever. Sometimes there's just a general lack of interest. And that lack of interest then doesn't uh, help you realize who you are or encourage yeah. you to do certain things because there's no encouragement back. So yep. as far as you, that happened with you and, and drawing. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So I took that up again recently. Um, and re- well, I don't know. I sort of been doodling on and off for the past few years, but not like knowing it was just no good. Um, but I drew something a few months ago and my husband's like, you know, that's really good. Maybe you should like upload that on the internet or just keep doing it. Um, so I started an Instagram account where I draw, um, which sort of has been, you know, not good for my self-esteem because I'm like in really, really wanting people to like it and see something in or, or make people feel things. Like, I think I really want to feel like things in common with other people because, you know, like I'm, I don't know, being mixed has something to do with it, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that like, I'm not from anywhere. Like, I don't really feel like I like an identity with any country. Like, I guess I'm starting to feel more American because I, you know, uh, not to get too political, but I think an American can come from anywhere. And that's the cool part of being an American. So like in that way, I'm proud, but like, otherwise I'm just like, but I'm so much more than that. Like I grew up everywhere and there are people like that, but I haven't found them. So, um, so, but like, and then, and then there's this whole like narcissistic dad thing and all the emotional issues I've been dealing with. And it's like, I want to, 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 to draw these things and, and see if there are people who are feeling just as sad and fucked up as I am. So, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of, um, <laughs> where I've gone, I guess. But, um, but today we are not going to draw well, you could draw sad and fucked up things, but one of your biggest <laughs> issues is you is validation that you feel that you need validation. Mm-hmm. So today yep. we are going to draw with our other hand, not our. Uh, are you a righty or a lefty? I am a righty. So you'll be drawing you with correctly. your left hand. I will be drawing with my yep. left hand too. And uh, I said before, we're going to draw um, what validation looks like to you or feels like to you. Is that something you want to do? Or maybe do you want to draw what yourself or what you feel like? No, let's, let's do that. I've been thinking about it. I haven't been practicing, um, but I have been thinking about it. Um, I have not so, practiced. No, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So, okay. so the part <laughs> of this exercise for everyone today, maybe we'll do this in the future with people. Uh, and in this case is to make a drawing of what validation looks like to you. And we're going to do it with our left hand. And because it's with our left hand where we know it's going to stink. So we don't care <laughs> if it's validating or not. That's my take on this exercise. Like, you know, it's going to be bad and maybe the worse, the better. Yeah. Cause like the drawings that I do for my site, like I'll be, you guys like them, but I'll sometimes put them on Reddit and I get, uh, people just like, uh, grilling me about how bad I am. And I'm like, I'm, and I'm like, that's just my style. You don't get it. Like, <laughs> that's what, I, <laughs> that's what I've come to. I'm not like formally you trained or anything, it. but, um, it's just, it, it is what it is. So I'm excited to do this left hand drawing today. And, uh, probably, uh, in a, like, we're going to probably as, as soon as I say like, uh, and now we're going to start, 
will probably come back two seconds later and be like, okay, how was it for you? But really, there might have been like a good 20 minutes in between. Yeah. So here we go. Might take a right, are you ready? Yep, ready. Let's start. Let's go. Ugh. Oh, God. Yeah, just, just keep, you can keep on talking it out. I'm going <laughs> to, I got to draw what validation looks like. Yeah. In, I, my, in my mind. Straight lines are fun because they're actually turning out to be squiggles. Oh my god! <laughs> this is actually really fun because um, I have like because you just you're you're completely relinquishing your control. This isn't going to be good no matter what you do. But people aren't going to even tell what this is. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get. Well, my, my... Chad, what are you drawing? What does validation look like to you? Well, um, validation. And like, what does it look or feel? I'm going to try and draw right now, like one of those, um, be- like uh, ribbons you'd get. Oh yeah, yeah. And but I'm just going to draw it uh, horribly. I don't know what I'm going to write in the ribbon. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm just going to try and draw like at least the outline of the ribbon. Okay. I haven't really thought about like what validation. Oh, let me oh, let me just think about it. You keep on drawing. Let me just think about this. Okay. Um, hmm. It's uh, that's an interesting thing where my mind is going. I have like a giant middle finger. That's all I think about. That's nice. So you're just like fuck it. No, it's more of like a fuck you to the people uh. that made me think this way. Mm. I think of like cons- it's just like all consuming like it's like a very gluttonous feeling like I want more give me more so I'm drawing just things that are like <laughs> I'm drawing I drew like a little like parking validation machine um, with it, like eating a ticket <laughs> um, it, it doesn't look <laughs> doesn't look like it though and it's demanding more um oh and now, I'm, that's now interesting. i'm trying to draw what is this i'm trying to draw the, the world but that does not look like that just looks like a person with scabs on their face oh boy i guess oh. you know what i guess what i want validation to feel like i guess is to not need validation so just to be kind of content with how I am and mm-hmm. I'm talking this out. Maybe I'm going to keep this part in the whole entire episode while we're doing this. And to me, validation for our contentness with who I am, I, I might have explained earlier in another podcast was, you know, I've, you know, uh, grew up in a, a family that likes vanity. So I've had some eating disorders. Yes, I am a male that's had, eat- I've been manorexic, everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to me, uh, just being, letting myself be fat um, mm-hmm. it is uh, validation for me, I guess, because that, that to me, just letting myself be fat is being content. And since I yeah. don't, so I'm going to draw my fatness. I love it. I I totally feel that. Um, my dad was really interested in 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 appearances, and it was important that his kids weren't fat. Um, and, and now I have to draw it with my left. Hand. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be tough. I'll try. That's the fun. Ooh, can I share you a nice story while we're talking? Yeah, go for it. Well, it it might. I think it's nice. Um, this was during the divorce. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, it doesn't sound nice, but it is. I promise. Um, one of the coolest things I've ever done was, um, I don't want to describe it like this on in the public, just in case it'll, it'll come back to bite me in the butt one day. But um, I went back to my dad's house to retrieve some paperwork um, that he wouldn't have been happy for me to get. Um, because it had all this financial information on it. Um, and the reason I was doing this was because my lawyer needed information about like how much money he had and where he was keeping it and stuff. So I literally had to like plan a mission to like break into my dad's house. (laughs) Um, 
which is kind of exhilarating, terrifying in the moment. Um, but like, it was like a big fuck you. Like, I'm going to destroy you and your life, man. Um, which it wasn't really destroying his life. Um, it was just giving my mom what she was owed. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure he's still doing fine. Um, but yeah, that was, um, my, my boyfriend's husband now like was parked outside and I literally, um, well, I couldn't find the spare key. So I just tried opening the door and amazingly it was unlocked. Um, and I, uh, snuck upstairs into his closet, um, really quietly, um, found out he wasn't in his bedroom. I think he was passed out in front of the TV downstairs. Um, had to grab like a stool or something to reach his like accordion folder of documents because it was high up and there were actually two of them. So I had to, so I couldn't carry, it was, one of them was really heavy. So I couldn't carry both in my hands. So I literally, I grabbed one and like heart racing, like ran down the stairs back into the car to drop it off. And my boyfriend's looking at me like expectantly, like, okay, can we drive off now? And I'm like, I'm not done. And then I run back into the house and get the last one. Um, and, oh, it was the most terrifying moment of my life. But, like, also, like, I don't know, the most badass. Like, I'm actually quite proud of myself. Like, I think I did a good thing. It sounds like it was pretty good. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my best to listen. I probably listen. When I listen to this again, I'll hear more of the story. I was uh, <laughs> looking at my drawing <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, this is really bad, but it's awesome. It's fine. It's fine. That's almost, I think it's the point. Yeah. Hmm. How, how's your, yours going? Mine is, I think decent. Like the drawing's fine, but I'm just not sure if it makes sense. Like, so I'm drawing, it's like a, it's, I think it's me eating the world, but it doesn't really look like that either. And I don't really know why I'm drawing it either. But again, it's like, I feel like getting validation is like, it's like, it's gluttonous. Like, I feel like glutton, like wanting more. Like, I know if I get a little bit, I'm, it's still not going to be enough. Like... Like I have a hundred followers now, uh, like that would have been great two weeks ago, but now I want a thousand. And then when I get a thousand, I'll feel like I'm still worthless and I want 10,000. Like it just never. So well, like, I've, been, I've been having that issue with like this podcast. So uh, the first uh, company that I use to host my podcast, uh, it's unlimited bandwidth. So I have no problem with that, but their analytics that they were giving me, they were telling me that it was real the whole entire time where in fact it wasn't real even though they still try and tell me it's real so i got another company to like suck in so i know exactly how many uh listeners i have uh or how many people listen to me every episode i could get a better track of like where they're listening and everything to like increase the listenership so when i got then like, i was feeling really good and <laughs> then when i got the new numbers i'm like i got so depressed i think for that next week and a half or two weeks i was i was just like Oh, it's not as big as I thought it was. But, oh. but, but at the same time, if you look from three months ago to where it is now, it's great. It's unbelievable. But my thought process was already so far past that number that um, it brought me kind of back down to earth. But if it was just naturally up until that point uh, where it was and I never saw the bigger number, I would have been thrilled. But now I still want more. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's, you know, that's, that's where our minds go. You want that yeah. validation. Yeah. So that's why we're drawing. And my drawing is, uh, you know, you know that girl, do you know, follow that account, uh, 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 Leanna Flick? Do you, have you seen her on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, like, I feel like this is this kind of shaky line, st like, style that she has so I think perfectly. She, I think she draws with her wrong hand. You think? Mine looks like hers. <laughs> you should show her. <laughs> um, mine really does. Um, so, I don't Except know. If you can still, the difference is you can still, 
somehow tell what she's drawing. Like, and I'm not sure you can tell at least what my thing is. Um, I almost want to. Look, am I allowed to look up things for reference? Or yeah, of course, of course. Oh, okay. Good. This is okay, yeah, this you. is part of the whole thing. <laughs> All right, let's see. What does a parking validation booth look like? Hmm. That's not what I was looking for. Well, <laughs> what was it? So you're looking at validation, what validation things look like? Um, ooh, let's just see. Yeah, let's see what happens. So I have DuckDuckGo, and honestly, it's just not as good as Google. Yeah, there's just a lot of check but you're, marks. but you're not being tracked. <laughs> no, but it's not giving me the results I want. Validation. Yeah, a lot of check marks. Ooh, a puzzle fitting in. Um, no, I want to look up a parking validation. I have to. I, I've drawn me. I've drawn a really fat version of me wearing a crop top. And, <laughs> and, and now yeah. I have to figure out what I'm going to write on the shirt. Mm. For everyone who's listening to this episode, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this interests you at all but i think this is the f- i hope we d- i do this again with someone else this has been fun i hope you do i think this is a good exercise <sighs> but what else hmm i don't even know what i'm gonna write what's a, what's something validating or what a, um um i love me it's not really. That's like more of the thing you should feel rather than like. No, validation. I know. I know what I'm gonna write here. Let's see. Wow, my writing with the other hand isn't that bad. <laughs> I I am in shock right now. What I, I wrote the word good, and I can read it. Amazing. Are you ambidextrous and cheating? I am not. Have you seen how I draw with my a regular hand? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, with my regular hand, um, I have a low bar, I guess. Um, <laughs> but my regular hand, I can't even. I, I have the shakiest hand in the world. Ooh. My writing is not as good as yours. Sounds like it is. No, I've seen your drawings. The. Uh, yeah. Even with my right hand, it's actually quite horrible. And that's, you know, that's one thing I'm happy I, I don't do is like try to make my handwriting like all perfect and nice. It's like, no, my handwriting looks like a 40 year old doctor's chicken scratch. Like, oh, yeah. yeah that, okay. that, oh, I get made fun. Like, uh, my dad will get on me about my handwriting, uh, how bad it is. Um, fuck that. But that's, you know, that's the annoying thing. Like, sometimes, even if the person who's telling you something is a, is a dick, like, sometimes they, what they're saying is not necessarily bad, which bothers me to no end. Like, when my dad would tell me to, like, exercise because it's good for me, I'd be like, fuck you, dad. And then like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, maybe I should, you know, go to the gym once in a while. Like, not because he told me to, but because... It's for my own self preservation. That's something I'm struggling with for sure. Oh, you get like, that too? You get you get the whole gym thing? What gym? Like, like, the, 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 no, like uh, did you get the comments uh, ever growing up about going to the gym or? Oh, or, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I still get like, those. Yeah. I get like, those. Like, you have a headache? Go uh, to the gym. <laughs> I, no, I get more of like, looks like you could do some sit ups. Uh, uh, things like that where you know obviously what's meant uh, I know that he uh, you know these things are meant uh, for the vanity but uh, my dad is also like a, a hypochondriac and uh, very nervous about dying and every like if you have a sneeze he's at the doctor um, and he's always concerned about his health uh, constantly <laughs> So now he, he, he puts that on everyone else. So as soon as he's like, he'll be like, I'm not doing it because of how you look. I'm doing it because, you know, you had a little long life. Mm. But it's both. But it's both. That's interesting. I, um, I have drawn my picture. Okay. How are we going to, are we just going to show our results 
to the the wonderful listeners after the podcast. I guess there's no way of after, or are you going to try after the podcast. It? Do you want me to email this to you right now? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going so, to see it. So uh, this is what this is. What, oh, do, uh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'll send it to you through Instagram. <gasps> Good. Okay, that's better. And yes, I did do this with my wrong hand. Who's calling me? Okay, hold on. Um, this is exciting. For everyone else who's listening to this and thinks this part of the podcast is boring, I'm sorry. <laughs> but now I'm really caring. Like, I find myself caring a lot about what you're going to think about this, Chad. <laughs> like, what, 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 horrible. Uh, no, just send it to me. I'm going to like it no matter what. Oh. Do you know why? Because it's, it's your validation. Here we go. Mm. I just sent you mine. I'm sending. <laughs> oh, yours is great. I love yours. That should be your profile picture. <laughs> I love it so much. Guys, it's really good. <laughs> I don't believe he drew that with his left hand. I drew that. That's why I said that a, that <laughs> woman, a, a Leanna Flick, must draw with her wrong hand because it kind of looks like it. It's really good. I like it. I like it. And here is your parking machine with your ticket. <laughs> Give me more validation. <laughs> this has been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I might do this from now on. I kind of like the way it looks, like the scribbliness. Like, if I don't know how to draw something, I might just start this way. And then, yeah, yeah guys, if you want to start drawing and you don't think you're any good, start with your left hand and then you, you'll get, like, you can't really get any worse. So yeah. When people then, used to ask me, like, what kind of, what is your style? I used to say craptastic. And, craptastic. I, and I said that because... You know, I'm not a refined human being. Uh, I don't know if I have the mental capacity to sit down and be any sort of professional drawer in any way because it's very tedious to do it over and over and over again. Uh, I just don't, I probably have ADHD. I don't have, like, it's just not in my blood. So when I like to do things, I like to do things once and it's kind of over. I made it and it's done and it's out in the world. Um, and Wait, I, kind of and, and I do it in a way where, to me, it's like, it's not refined. That's part of what my style would be. And, um, you know, just like I love horror films. And I don't like these newer horror films where everything is pristine looking and, like, beautifully shot or whatever. Because horror, to me, is... Uh, is supposed to be grainy and gritty and and you know it's more about the imagination and the idea of something and then you made this other thing that's imperfect with that idea but the idea always um is is the king uh of the situation and that will always come through and so that's kind of like how i look at it is like the idea is what matters um and then how you make it is part of it but it shouldn't look perfect because you know, I'm not perfect and what I'm making isn't perfect and it's an about imperfect kind of things. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Uh, are we, this is the moment in Step Brothers where they go, did we just become best friends? <laughs> did we? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like I, I just feel, well, I don't know. Maybe this isn't as wholesome, but I feel like I don't want to, I don't want to draw well because if I tried it would be really bad. So I'm just going to try drawing in my own shitty way and, and again, make it about the idea. And then if I get better, so be it. But if not, then I'm, I'm kind of like my style too. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really fighting against that. Like everything has to be perfect thing. Um, you know, but then, you know, maybe that's getting in the way of like actually improving and getting better at something. So it's a balance, I guess. Well, that's the other thing. Then there's the part of like improving and getting better. Like, I don't know if I could get better. Um, did, you ever, <laughs> did you ever see that uh, documentary? I mean, now we're really boring people. Uh, did you ever see that documentary, uh, Dogtown and Z Boys? No. <laughs> okay. So Dogtown and Z Boys is about the birth of uh, skateboarding in the modern era. And it's about like this crew of skateboarders uh, from that uh, early era, just before Tony Hawk. And they, in the documentary, they discuss, uh, I guess, the, the, the bigger name guys that came out of the group. And they discuss one guy whose name was Jay Adams. And Jay Adams had a tough life. And, but when he was younger, he was a skateboarder who he didn't practice. 
And when you hear people talk about him, he was just naturally good at the way he did things. And he would never practice and he would never do the same thing twice. And in whatever he was making, he might have started off one way and a disaster was about to happen in whatever he move he was trying to do. And then uh, eventually he came out on the other side on something he could never repeat again because it was just this in-the-moment type of thing. Uh And uh, the the one guy in the documentary goes, and when he did that, he goes, that is what art is. And it's because he wasn't, he didn't practice. He didn't do it like that. He was just in the moment of whatever he was doing. And I think Mm. for everyone listening, as far as art therapy and and going along these things, the, the most important thing for us is to like just be in the moment of what we're doing, uh, like taking care of ourselves and like taking our mind off of whatever else is worrying us in life. Because when you draw or you paint or you're doing whatever, it really helps um, with the psyche and getting whatever is out of you, out of you or whatever's going on in your brain to slow it down. And when you're doing it, you're slow. And uh, being slow is your best friend in a way, because your mind is probably racing, if, especially if you're in an abuse situation in our, and you keep on and you're out of it, but you keep on thinking about it all day long. You know, one of the best things to do is sit down and draw or paint or, or write just to, so your brain stops telling you all these terrible things. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> I second it. So I um, guess that that's our episode. That's our episode. We've just did it. I think I'm, I'm cool. keeping this all in here with like uh, uh, us drawing at the same time. Okay. So, I feel like I ran a lot. No, you were great. Do you have any parting yeah. words? Um, hmm. um, to anyone who's still in a situation or a relationship with a narcissist, I hope that you are taking care of yourself whatever that means to you. And if it's possible, I encourage you to leave that situation because for me, that is the best damn thing I ever did. I'm still working through some shit, but I don't know if I'd be alive otherwise. So take care of yourself and I love you. All right. And love yourself. All right. That was great. That was great. I have uh, one thing written down here because it was something you said during the podcast and I wrote it down and I wanted to bring it back at the end. So Allie, to quote yourself, this one's for you. You are not a dick. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't look. I can't just take that at face value because when I accept that, then I then I might become a dick. No, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> Allie, you are not a dick. And for everyone else that out there, uh, thank you for listening to this. Uh, crazy episode uh an art therapy episode of the how to survive the narcissist apocalypse podcast i'll probably do another exit uh conclusion after this ali once again thank you for uh, joining me today and thank i'll talk to you much. for two seconds after uh i say goodbye so everyone see you later <laughs> bye so if everyone uh, out there is listening still and is still hooked into this this episode uh, what has gone on is last night I was talking with my sister and uh, I was telling her about this episode and the drawings of what I drew and what Allie drew. And I explained to her what Allie drew. And she said, hold on one second. Subconsciously, Allie, in, in the picture, she's still paying for her validation. So I'm like, <laughs> that's really interesting. And so this morning... Uh, I texted Allie and I said, uh, this is what my sister said. Do you want to kind of maybe uh, redraw something or are you okay with what it is? Because we were, we, I guess our intention was supposed to be validation of uh, what's validation look like or feel like to you. And I, I guess my point of view was maybe you're still stuck in your old way of thinking. What would the new way of thinking look like? So now I've mm-hmm. rambled on here and you've gone out throughout the day to think of something new. Mm-hmm. And now you're going to draw it. Or you're going to tell me what you're going to draw. And I'm going to talk to you while we finish this one up. All right. Sounds good. So, so what, uh, what do you got? Yeah. So I, like, I, I, I was talking to you a little bit earlier and I was thinking about what you said, like how that subconsciously came out. And I guess like, 
when we were drawing the first time, I still, and I sort of still feel like validation to me, like I have a really unhealthy relationship with, obviously, like I feel like I can't get enough of it. And like, and I was, and it's, I don't know, my dad really considered love to be conditional and was very obsessed with money. So, you know, it kind of makes sense, but like, if valid, if I had a healthier relationship with validation, it would be, or I guess, I don't know if I got, if I was validated in the right way, it would feel like enough. And I guess, um, I don't know that kind of validation should, I I think that kind of validation is most important when it comes from yourself. Um, or if someone, or if you, or I guess, yeah, or someone else, like, tells you, like, I see you or I feel you, like, I understand you. Um, but, and I, and I think I'm still chasing that. I think that's why I draw is, like, I want people to, I hope that someone sees something in what I put out and they're like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I get it. I feel that. I've, I've been there before. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I don't again, being validated by yourself is like just being, just telling yourself, like, I, like, I get it. You've been through this. It was real. Um, and like, I don't know. Yeah, it was real. Like, like somehow like you understand your experiences and who you are as, as a result of it and that's okay and you're doing the best you can. Um, and what I thought I was going to draw, I'll try now. Uh, I'm doing it with my left hand still. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yours is more of going to be around like the validation of your experience? Yeah, or just, I don't know, just like the idea that like, good validation or like, I don't know, I don't want to say like the right kind of validation, but like what I want validation to be is like for it to come from me and to feel like. So to come from inward and not from an outward source of someone saying. Totally internal instead of external validation. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, how do you draw that? Um, I had a really stupid idea and also it's not happening the way I want it to. What is that? (laughs) What what is everything I said like? What is that in picture form? Um, well, um, oh. what for for me? I, like cause mine was, I guess, a similar uh, uh, similar type of theme of the validation from, yeah. from inside. And for me, it was just uh, you know me looking really fat or letting mm-hmm. myself look fat and being imperfect. Yeah. So what's in, what is the most imperfect thing you think is about you? I I <laughs> like I immediately wanted to laugh because I knew where you're going. That honestly, everything about me. So like, but um, like so I was I'm literally drawing myself looking in the mirror, um, and we'll see what I say to myself. I've I've done the, this kind of drawing a couple times or at least once before, like talking to myself in the mirror, but it it hasn't always been kind. So I'll say something in the drawing. I'll say something nicer to myself. Okay. Um, so when you, when you're, you put yourself down, I guess, in every single way, if it's so from how you look to how you, how smart you are to everything. Oh yes. I'm extremely self deprecating. Like I'm aware of it. Like I, I feel, I don't really know how not to be, Like, it's very ingrained in my, like, and I feel kind of like a shithead for saying that, too, you know? Like, oh, I'm so self-deprecating. Like, I can't say a good thing about myself. (laughs) But, like, I really, like, it's really hard. Like, I, um, if I feel, like, good about myself for a little bit, like, afterwards, I might, like, analyze it and be like, oh, my God, Allie. Like, you're so full of it. Get over yourself. Um... And so I just always assume, and you know, I I don't know, sometimes it can be good, but it's mostly bad. I think to the extent I take it to, it's pretty bad. Like I'm always thinking the worst of myself and, um, thinking, I just, I just assume that people know more than I do and that everything I know, everyone already knows. So if I say something, it's like, 
or I, I usually, maybe I won't say something because it's like, oh, it's obvious to you. Um, and then I end up being very easy to impress because, I don't know, because what everyone else has to say is right or, um, yeah, I don't know. And the, yeah, I don't, um, I always, I don't know. So I, can we go, your, 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 your brain is on, your brain is on overdrive. Yeah. <laughs> you are your own worst enemy. Uh, you assume what others are thinking, even though they might not be thinking that at all. Yeah. That's not fair to other people. And that probably drives you into an other gear of your brain going. And then the cycle continues. So your own worst enemy right now is your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So we Um, we have to, we have to eliminate your brain. (laughs) Uh, Well, I have some ideas. Okay, no, but, um, this is, okay, I'm looking at a full-length mirror, um, in this picture. Now I feel like I need a speech bubble. What can I say to myself? Um, um, I have an idea of what you should draw, but it has to be something, it has to come from you. Uh, that's another thing. I, I really just wish, like, people would tell me what to do. Like, it would just be so much easier. <laughs> no, like, honestly. No, because no, like, it has I, to come from you. Um, I know. Because you've um, said, the thing is, like, you've said everything. You just have to connect your dots. Um, yeah. No, can't you connect them for me? Well, I have a question. <laughs> do, you, do you try and do things too fast? Oh, yeah. And you want Definitely. everything done right away? And, like, you nope. want to go from A to Z and not A to B and, like, not let things kind of mm-hmm. ruminate? Yep. Okay. And if they don't, if, if it doesn't, if it's not bad, if I'm not doing something quick enough, I feel like I'm an idiot. No, d- just do, do what you're doing. Mm. With the, with the, uh, but take your time on what you, uh, we can talk it out. Let's see. You're on to something, but um, and now I'm just thinking. <sighs> so you have you in front of a mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you see your body? Do you see your face? Yeah, it's a, it's a head on a body. There are no arms or legs. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Why? I don't know. There, it's hard to draw arms and legs with your left hand. Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm I forgot there. about that part. I forgot about that part. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm sticking to our rules. Um, let's see. It's a full length okay. mirror. Yeah, it's a full length mirror. Okay. I'm going to tell myself to slow down. Let's see. Slow down. You're doing Okay. Yeah, because that's interesting. How fast do you go all day? I, I move very quickly, and then when I... You, when, then, when, you, when you're on the sidewalk, do you, like, motor by people? I walk really fast. Yeah. Yeah, I walk past people. Have you ever tried to just walk slowly? Yes, it's really hard. <laughs> my, hus- my husband's like, Allie, like, where, where, where are you going to garage? Slow down. And I'm like, but, but, like, I've tried walking slower, and it's painful. Like... I, it's like it's it's more work to walk slowly. Um, what do you think about when you're walking fast? Nothing. Nothing at think. all. Um, you're just uh, you're just going. I'm just going. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes, like, maybe I'm thinking about what I'm supposed to be doing next, or um, yeah. Always so, oh, thinking so, ahead. so you're thinking ahead and not thinking about what you're doing at that moment. Yeah, it's hard for me to be present. That's something I'm working on. Yeah, you got to do the. Yeah, you have to. Do, you have to slow down and be in the present moment, which is kind of what you're doing right now by drying. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I have a. I have a secret. Um, so I draw in advance. Sometimes, like, sometimes when I get in the mood, I like draw like twenty things at once, and then I schedule them out. Like I can't even draw in the moment and then post in the moment. What do you, um, what do you mean? You've drawn all of your your postings twenty days in advance. Uh, tried like weeks and months in advance. 
I don't like, know. I have that, that, but that's not that unusual. I mean, if you're going through an actual uh, moment where you like a lot of things are coming to you, then, mm-hmm. you know, get them all down while you still have them like hot and fresh in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel, when I see other people, I feel like it's more like they're going like, la di da. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to write it down and post it. Maybe you all have two ideas in a day, but like, and then, and then they won't know when their next idea will come. And I'm so afraid I'm going to run out of ideas that I'm just like, I've sort of like stockpiled them. And I like, I have so much buffer time between now and when I'm going to have to come up with something original. Um, and I think, I, I think I'm set till March, 2020. <laughs> if I post, um, three things a week, um, which feels insane because it's not like I make, it's not like a job. I do this for fun. But <laughs> it just, it's just weird to think about. Um, I think I've done. Okay. Um, send it over. So, send it over. Yeah. Let me, let me look. So I wonder, I'm just going to, yeah, I'll, I'm, I don't want to overdo it. So I'll stop here, but I don't know. Maybe I'll feel differently in a couple seconds. Um, uh, so how's your day been? Um, my, that's an interesting question. My, my day's been okay. I've been just kind of, uh, I, w- I was editing and uh, I had to help out with the family thing very briefly. So I kind of did that. And uh, from then on, uh, what else? You know, answering emails. I haven't gotten to all my emails yet that I've had to answer. Um, and then I was trying to get home for for this so it sounds like i might have done stuff but i I didn't do much but uh, like all the social media and uh, stuff for this has been um is taking longer every single day i was trying to trying to fix my website stuff and things that had gone wrong Mm. so it's kind of uh like that trying to promote uh this podcast so Mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah like trying to get people to write about the podcast, to uh, get the word out and things like that. It did, mm-hmm. you know, that takes a little bit of time. So I was kind of concentrating on those things a bit today. And, that sounds productive. And then uh, last night I had a good conversation with my sister, um, about, you know, what people, some people don't know is that in the, in the background of, you know, sometimes when, like when the podcast isn't on, I do get emails, uh, and, and texts from people or direct messages, uh, who are uh, not doing well and are in a bad spot. Uh, sometimes they need uh, help, uh, free help, or get uh, out of their mm. relationships and, and are in, in really not, not in great positions. So uh, what people don't understand or don't really know, and my sister and I were discussing like what to do, make, create this podcast and make it a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, I, I make phone calls um, for people all over, you know, the United States, wherever you're kind of from, because uh, sometimes people need help trying to find the right uh, services uh, for wow. themselves, like free services. So, uh, you know, sometimes part of my day is uh, making those phone calls to try and get that person help and then getting the right person to get them in, in touch with. So, yeah. um, you know, the podcast started off one way, then it became a podcast. And now, you know, I'm doing like front lines, uh, front lines kind of work, uh, on yeah. the side. So, it's yeah. ca- so it's those things kind of are part of my day when like those things kind of pop up. Um, and then sometimes with, with those people, I'm, uh, talking to them for a couple hours, uh, trying to get a good gauge of like what is actually kind of going on. So in a weird way, mm-hmm. I'm not a social worker. My sister is actually a social worker um, and a mediator, uh, but I'm not a social worker. But somehow, um, in, sort of become- it, I'm becoming one without having the certification to do it. Oh. Um, yeah. So that's um, what I kind of what I've been doing. That's in- incredible of you. I I don't know if I'd have the wherewithal or energy for that so it's really it's really cool work you're doing but I just I guess I want to urge you to you know you can take a step back and like you know 
it's hard. There aren't that, I don't know. Like, it's hard to find, like, you know, therapy is expensive and... Oh, no, I, well, I, this is the thing. I love helping people. Like, I love uh-huh. finding those things for them that they weren't able to find and, and making the calls and getting them, you know, the right person to uh, deal with. Yeah. Um, so my sister and I were just kind of discussing, like, going forward, what else, like, how can this all work in one kind of thing? And, you know, yeah. so, uh, okay. Before, anyway, enough about me. Um, <laughs> I got your picture. I love this. Yeah. I love your little mirror. Um, I love how it's just the head and, and the two legs. And, and even though it only has two eyes, uh, it, you, only, you only have two eyes in this picture. It's very expressive for just, yeah. for just you know what I mean? Um, it's just very, it looks, you look sad. Um, yeah. At least the reflection kind of does. Because they're just, um, you know what I mean? And not that it's like sad, yeah. sad, but it's just like. It's like a little forlorn. Like, <sighs> okay, you yeah. know, I got it. Um, yeah. I think it's great. I, I love it. Okay, I'm glad. Thank you for validating me in my art. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's just, it's just that your emotion of that care of your of you in this picture, and what's the greatest thing is is that the way it is drawn, because it uh, like because with your other hand and it being very, uh, I'm not going to use the word crappy. I'm going to use the word um, rustic. <laughs> is a rustic kind of you know what I mean. Like worn? Yes. <laughs> um, Very generous. Uh, that it's kind of worn that, you know, the it kind of looks like you're in a spot where uh, this face, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just a face with two eyes, no nose, no mouth, nothing. And the fact that you actually get emotion from it, I, I think it's pretty amazing. And I think that's because of the, the way everything is done. Hmm. You know, that's it's, my take. It's so fun that that's what you get. It's like, I can tell you exactly why I drew everything the way I did. And, <laughs> can, and you? I, can you? I, I mean, like, but it's, but it's embarrassing because it's like... No, no, is, I want to know. I mean, honestly, like, okay, when you're drawing with your left hand, it's like, I get, or apparently when I do, I, it's, I can't draw straight lines. So that's why the bodies look like they do. But I'm not unhappy with how I look in the mirror. Like, I like how kind of, like, hunched I look. Like, I think that's, that yeah, is Yeah, you, you look kind of hunched. Everyone, when but, you finally see what we're talking about, when I put this out on the day, you'll see, like, um... It, yeah, you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah, it, it gets pretty interesting. Um, yeah, like, I'm more upright outside, but I don't, I wasn't thinking about that when I drew it. Um, the mirror ended up being very big and, and me being very small. So I'm like, okay, I'll make it standing. So I was sort of correcting as I went. Um, and I don't draw, like when I draw faces, I don't usually draw um, like a nose or ears or anything. And if, if I draw legs, but they're sticks. If I draw hands, I think they're also sticks. Like I don't, I'm not really, my style hasn't evolved yet. I, I, I like, I, I like more simple people because um, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a good artist, but also I don't feel like I need to be like drawing people's fingers to get my message across. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's half laziness, half efficiency. I guess. Um, it works. But, yeah. It's fine with me. But right. my excuse here is that I was drawing with my left hand. So it's a little worse than it usually would be. I will, I'm going to try more pictures drawing with my left hand. Cause I loved my le- left hand drawing, but at the same time, yeah, I think I'm like, like, yeah. like, uh, so, and this podcast might be now be getting a little bit too long for people, but I apologize. I have one more thing I kind of have to say about this when it comes to my brain. Um, and it might be the same with yours. You know, when I was playing uh, baseball and I was a pretty decent baseball player for a Canadian Jewish guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, eventually at one point my brain started getting in, in the way when I was fielding the ball, not fielding it, but throwing it that when I had too much time, I would be my own worst enemy. But why I love yeah. baseball so much was because, uh, when you go to the, when you're up at the plate, 
you know, a good baseball player is a successful three out of the 10 times they're up at the plate to hit. And in my mind, that was totally acceptable. I'm allowed to fail seven times. I have this many chances. And I liked that about it, that I didn't have to be perfect every single time. I could just, you know, be okay three out of the 10 times. And that, w- in my brain, that kind of uh, worked for me. So I forgot, uh, do you know what? I completely forgot what I was even talking about or how I even started talking about this or why. <laughs> but it was just, it just, um, drawing, it just with your left hand. A drawing with your left hand so hey, th- thank you so why i like drawing with the left hand was because in my mind you know i like drawing with my right but in my mind with my left hand i'm allowed to be bad mm-hmm. and oh look what i drew with my left hand and look it actually became kind of something which is cool but i allowed myself that oh it doesn't matter if it's bad because it's my left hand And I Mm -hmm. like that for my confidence that like someone could say like, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, like, you know, it was with my left hand, which might then give me more confidence with my other hand eventually when I get to it that, oh, if I'm good with that, now let's kind of go that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good approach. So that's why I was like, oh, let's see what else I can kind of make. And if someone says it's crappy, then eh, you know, but it kind of is, but it is, but it is fine. But three out of ten times, someone might like it. Yeah. And art is subjective. Whatever. So now we've gone, I think, like an hour. This is like a 23-minute extra. So I think think it's time for us to uh, say goodbye for the second time. Uh, For real this time. For real this time. So everyone, goodbye. Goodbye. And this is the end of the episode for real this time, everyone. You made it through uh, uh, those, the, that false finish, and now we're at the real finish. And I just want to thank Allie again for being on the show, for sharing her story uh, with us today. And not just that, going deeper and doing these drawings with us and then taking my phone call again uh, and continuing the podcast. She was a trooper uh, to deal with me and a big help for hopefully everyone out there uh, who might be going through the same thing. Uh, These drawings that we did will be out uh, immediately, probably when I wake up, uh, so probably like 9 a.m. Eastern time. That's not when I wake up, but that's usually when I make the postings. Uh, Eastern time, those those drawings will be on there. So once again, uh, thank you to Allie. Thank you for everyone who's listening. Uh, Subscribe to our podcast. Tell your friends about our podcast. Tell anyone who's struggling and uh, give us some nice reviews. And that is the official end of this episode. Thank you for listening to the How to Survive the Narcissist Apocalypse podcast. Have a good night. This is an emergency broadcast transmission. This is not a test. This is an emergency broadcast transmission. This is not a test. Please remain calm.